This is the largest retrospective undertaken on Billy Apple's work and it's absolutely timely. The artist is going to be 80 at the end of the year. He's never had a major show that surveys his entire career. So it's an opportunity to look across everything that he's done from his earliest work in the 1960s right up until the present. And I think the previous exhibitions that have taken place have taken chapters in that long story. This is going to be the first that looks at everything. And I'm really keen to try and connect some of the dots. People know pockets of Billy's work well. They see him as a pop artist or a conceptual artist or as a conceptual painter. But actually there are threads and links that can relate the very earliest works to what he's doing right now and I'm very keen to see if we can link those up despite the vast diversity of the kinds of media that he's used and the different forms that his work has taken. Billy Apple was born Barry Bates so for the first 20 or so years of his life he had a different name. So the exhibition begins with works that he produced when he was still Barry Bates as a student at the Royal College of Art in London in the late 1950s through to about 1962. But it really begins with that moment in November 1962 when Barry Bates became Billy Apple and changed his name, uh, had himself photographed, changed his look and really invented a new identity. And when he did that, he did it actually as an art work. So he, as an artist, turned himself into his own artwork. And that really is the launch for the entire exhibition. So the show begins with a self-portrait of the artist looking at his new identity. And throughout the exhibition, we return to this notion of the self-portrait in every space as you go through the show. Of course, those self-portraits take many different forms as the exhibition unravels. In his very first exhibition, after he left art school, Billy took himself as his own subject. He turned himself into a product and presented himself in that exhibition as a new product, thinking about how you would market a new product. So he needed a brand, he needed a logo, he needed symbols that could be associated with him. He'd invented himself as a new entity, this Billy Apple, and he took the apple as his emblem. So that first exhibition contained cast and painted bronze fruit, in particular apples, that stood for the artist. They were a kind of self-portrait, but of course they were absolutely ordinary objects. And instead of presenting a hand-painted portrait, he actually produced these reproductions of a photograph, not just once, but in 12 identical canvases. And that to him was reminiscent of the way in which manufacturing took place in the modern world. You actually mass-produced objects, and this was a way of thinking about how to be a product in the modern world. So his first portraits are not really self-portraits, they're actually taken by someone else, but they present the artist in his new identity as a brand new product for this new pop world. Even at art school, Billy chose to work with the specialist technicians at the school and very quickly took a hands-off approach to actually making his art. He gave away his camera, he stopped drawing and painting pretty much by the end of art school. And instead, he used specialists, printers, photographers, people who could help him produce art to a very high specification, very much as went on in the advertising world where he did actually work to make a living. So he used the example of the film director, or the creative director in an ad agency as the model for how to behave as an artist. This was long before conceptual art, which also brought in the idea that art was not about making objects, it was about generating ideas and 
actually circulating them in whatever form you could. So Billy's adoption of this approach, where he didn't actually make his own work, was actually quite a radical gesture early on, but it's how he's always worked. He's chosen to collaborate with others. He has people helping him stretch his canvases, paint the words that go on them, um, prepare the products that he produces, organize the exhibitions, write about his work. And he's treated his clients, the collectors, and people interested in his work, and even the museums where his work has ended up, as collaborators too, requiring them to enter into the whole process of making to broaden out the definition of how art actually comes into being and involve a whole network, a whole system of people and contexts in the production of his work.